This is Nerds with Words, unlocking the vault of knowledge one nerdy fact at a time. I'm your host, Wonder Nerd, and today we're talking about really small rocks, foiled theories, and ungrateful avocados. Is it safe to eat, breathe, or put volcanic ash in your eye? The answer will not surprise you. It is no. Do electrons float in pudding? Gold was used to prove it does not. Shocker. Why did giant sloth's extinction almost cause the avocado's extinction and how a mysterious creature saved the avocado? And we'll finish off with puns. Let's get started, nerds. Have you ever wondered why airports shut down if there is even one millimeter of volcanic ash? Well, let me lay the scene. Imagine, if you will, you're on a plane with a screaming baby, a man who thinks shoes and socks are optional, and they're all out of peanuts. Luckily, if you fly in the air where there's volcanic ash, you only have to deal with that for a very, very short period of time when the plane crashes and or explodes into a ball of fire. This has to do with the fact that ash is itty bitty little rocks that like to break anything mechanical. That is also why if you want a slow and horrible death, you can do any of the following. You can breathe in volcanic ash so it mixes with the moisture in your lungs to form something kind of like a liquid concrete where you'll eventually drown. How fun is that? If you get it in your eyes, it can either cause vision damage or complete vision loss. If you eat or drink from contaminated sources for an extended period of time, it can cause a super fun disease where in extreme cases causes increases in bone density, calcifies your ligaments, and joint or muscle pain from consuming excess amounts of fluorine found in volcanic ash in the form of hydrogen fluoride. If Yellowstone finally does go off, just run away or find one of those weird survival dudes that always have a crazy beard and a wild look in their eyes to mooch off of to survive. Moving on, nerds, after it was discovered that stuff is made up of smaller stuff and smaller stuff is made up of even smaller stuff, electrons were discovered and the plum pudding model was created in 1904. This model makes absolutely no sense if you don't even know what plum pudding is, like myself. So just imagine cheese with a bunch of holes in it. Those holes are the electrons, and it is theorized that the actual cheese is so something called positive pudding. Weird AF, I know, but they actually believe that electrons just floated in objects and in the air like little fish in a pond. Along came a scientist named Rutherford in 1911, who was trying to prove the plum pudding model was actually correct, and instead accidentally disproved it with lasers. What he did was he set up a fancy laser that emitted alpha particles and then shot it at a really thin piece of gold foil. If the plum pudding model was correct, then the alpha particles would have gone right through, with a few going off to the side. Instead, only a few made it through, while most go off to the side, and some are even deflected backward. And so, we learned that the world wasn't positive pudding with electrons floating in it, but instead little balls of protons and neutrons being orbited by electrons, because that makes so much more sense. Moving on, nerds, have you ever wished that avocado pitch just didn't exist? I happen to hate avocados, blasphemy I know, but the massive pits always threw me off like armpit hair on a shirtless man. See what I did there? Because there's two different types of pits. It's a pun. <laughs> anyway, back on subject. The pits of avocados actually served a very important evolutionary advantage since the main consumer of avocados over 13,000 years ago was the giant sloth. The giant pits of the avocado were meant to be eaten by the giant sloth and passed through their bowel movements. In other words, they were pooped out. After the giant sloths died out around that time, avocados should have gone extinct. Except there was one creature, one mysterious creature that really, really, really liked avocados as well. It was humans. No shocker there. Humans cultivated avocados for their own use and saved the precious avocado from the brink of extinction. So the next time you eat guacamole, demand that the avocado in the guacamole to thank you and your ancestors for not letting it die out. And remind it that it should be grateful to be eaten. Then remember that you're talking to a bowl of guacamole and how absolutely weird you look right now. Now we move on to my favorite part of the podcast where I cause the following symptoms, laughter, groans, and wishes for my inevitable demise. Time for puns. Do you know why volcanoes are so rude? Because they interrupt. <laughs> What fish is the richest? A goldfish. You get it? Because we were talking about the Rutherford gold foil experiment earlier. Goldfish. Um, 
Why do avocados get depressed so often? Because they're pitiful. <laughs> kind of like me. Alrighty, nerds, before you go back to the mundane, immerse yourself in the extraordinary by trying to learn at least one random useless fact a day. You can ruin family functions, a company dinner, or your own free time with absolute nonsense. How fun is that? Links to the articles for this podcast are in the bio. This was Nerds with Words, where I spend my time talking about things that make me happy because in a world where socks and sandals are still legal, I need something to give me a little bit of hope in humanity. So stay curious, stay nerdy. Bye, nerds.